is so exciting. Today, we are going to be talking to you about four parenting beliefs that is going to be life changing for you. And so when I say talking to you about, we're going to be challenging your current beliefs when it comes to raising kids, uh, being a parent, being a teacher, getting kids to cooperate, listen to you, all sorts of things. Uh, so I want to say that if you're struggling with the behavior of your child, if you're a teacher struggling with the behavior of children in your classroom, you're in the right place at the right time. We're going to bring you truthful, real information that is going to be very empowering, extremely enlightening, and it's going to work to make your uh, parenting life basically your dream life, right? Make your dream parenting life come true. Mm -hmm. So we're Bonnie and Thomas Leota. Yes. And we have a combined experience of almost 50 years in personal development. So Thomas, do you want to share a little bit about your story, short form? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. All right. So I've had the privilege and honor of working with literally thousands and thousands of kids through my whole life. And it started all the way back from Little League Baseball when I was in high school, getting the chance to work with some eight-year-olds. Then it actually developed moving forward of helping kids play video games through the company of Nintendo as a gameplay counselor. I also got into martial arts for a very young age and had a chance to, at that point, start teaching martial arts to young kids and develop the reputation of quote unquote, can you fix my kid too? Because we focused on life skills, missing life skills, like self-control, responsibility, self-discipline and focus. And when these missing life skills were put into place, all these behavior issues that parents were having seem to start to get less and less and then eventually go all the way. So that's the privilege and honor that I've had to work with thousands of families and hundreds of thousands of kids. And I'll tell you what, if one parent can do it, another parent can do it. <laughs> hundreds of thousands of kids. <laughs> hundreds, no, thousands of children, not hundreds of thousands yes. of children. I just want to be clear there. Uh, yeah, so... I have a personal development background. So I was a business leader. Um, in 1994, I read a book called Think and Grow Rich, and it implanted a dream in my spirit. I was like, oh my gosh, if I knew what was in this book when I was like 12, I never would have got kicked out of high school every year for the next four years. I never would have had a teenage pregnancy that I ended up giving my baby up for adoption. I never would have done all these things if I knew what was in this book. And I was I'd never really accomplished anything in my life. I'd never finished anything in my life. I was one of these children that would have been diagnosed ADHD, oppositional defiant disorder. In fact, my mom, my mom, when she heard the first time oppositional defiant disorder, she goes, oh, you are oppositional defiant disorder. Uh, anyway, so that's why I can relate. I can relate with these children. I can relate with the solution when I saw it. But, you know, when I'm 21 and I'm going, dad, I'm going to find a way to empower all kids by the time they're 12 years old. And he's looking at me like, OK, that's that's nice, dear. You know, and he still looks at me like that's nice, dear. So so we're not in the game of being a child or being a parent for the rewards, for the recognition, for the gratitude that comes with it. Right, guys, this isn't like a. This isn't like a pathway that's going to put you on some sort of pedestal. And that's what we really got to understand. And that could be a belief that we're challenging also, but not one of the four main beliefs that we're going to be challenging today from chapter three in a book called Raising Healthy, Happy, Cooperative Kids. So if you're watching us on YouTube or you know, you're not part of the uh, Facebook study group, we put together a study group where you can join us live and we're going to have a conversation with some of our clients here at the end of our little presentation and opening here when we talk about the beliefs. But in 2018, we wrote a book called Raising Healthy, Happy Cooperative Kids, and it shares the pathway to all child behavior disorders. It shows the pathway to basically anything negative we experience with our children. And um, we're very, very proud of it. It talks about the formula that creates defiance and then exactly shows you exactly what you need to do to create more success with your children. So how exciting is that? All right. So, um, so with that being said, this is our first time going live on all of these different platforms at the same time. Uh, if you're on YouTube in the description link at the very, very bottom of the description, there is a link that you can uh, join us live here today. So you can ask questions or talk to us 
And also, let me just share this. If you need to have the actual um, resources, the Raising Healthy Happy Cooperative Kids book and audio book and such, then go to this link, learntospeakkid.com. You'll have your resources automatically. You'll be able to join our study group and you'll be able to find the link as well in there to join us live. Okay, I think I did all the housekeeping. So now we're going to challenge beliefs. All right, so belief number one that we have today as parents on a global scale, the masses of the people believe that sh all children should be lavished with attention. That that's all they need. All children need to know how loved they are and they need to be lavished with attention. Now, I'm going to go through the four beliefs that we're challenging and then we're going to replace them with new beliefs that will serve you and your family be very empowering. All right. So how exciting is that? Are you open? I'm, I'm watching your faces looking for nods. OK, right on. Thank you so much for being here to participate so I could actually do that. Um, OK, so number two is. We believe that our job is to, I wrote down reactive attention, reactive attention. Um, basically, your child does something, then we come along and, and we react to what they're doing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're being taught that child does something we don't like. We come along, we do something called punishment, discipline, something they don't like bringing the old term two wrongs don't make a right that was coined into a phrase somewhere in the 17th century. <laughs> but uh, somewhere how when it comes to parenting, two wrongs make a right. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit here. Number three is children should eat for free and play for free and basically um, have everything that you work really hard for just because they're cute and they're a kid. Does that, does that resonate as truth? Oh, we're on something. We're on to something here. Uh, and number four is we believe in basically authoritative style parenting. Uh, if we get down on their level and we look them in the eyes and we explain their punishments, then we can feel good about putting them in a timeout. We, we can feel good about coming in and taking their favorite thing away. Okay. So Thomas, you know all, all that I'm talking about yes. here is to be true. But you see, Thomas here has something called dyslexia. So I don't know if you've ever heard of dyslexia. It can be a little bit annoying at times, but but it's literally his... Superpower. Yes, yeah, superpower. I was going to say secret weapon, but it's basically his superpower. And so when you were... When you were in 1994, you made a decision that when you had an opportunity to teach white belts... Mm -hmm. Talk about that. The decision that you made back in 1994 before you even had a student that literally is changing the face of parenting. Yes. And I remember that moment very, very crystal clear to this day. And when I got a chance to earn my first black belt, then I was always asked, well, can you teach me? Can I get a chance? And I got a chance to be in that leadership role. And there was a moment of clarity where I asked myself, okay, whew. I got to figure this out. I got, I'm going to be the leader here. What do I, how does this work? And I started to think, well, who could I monkey see monkey do? Who am I modeling as far as this leadership? And what I noticed is people who always said yes to kids, you give them an inch, they took a mile and they were never long-term successful. Then I also saw the ones that always said no. And then that was the one where kids started to learn how to lie, cheat and steal. So I really didn't see, I was thinking there's got to be an alternative. Where's the third option here? Because there's always three to everything. So if it's not yes or no, that's where there was right down the middle, where it wasn't about giving them everything that they just asked for instantly or somehow telling them no. It was they were saying, could I be like you? Could I do what you do? One day, can I do exactly what you do without you? And it clicked right there to walk a fine line right down the middle without saying yes, without saying no, but it was about transferring the responsibility of what I could do over to them so they could do it one time without me and all by themselves, just like all of our animals in the animal kingdom. <laughs> that was the aha moment. Yeah, that is such great awareness. And I just want to 
put it into mom terms is he made a decision to do the opposite of anything negative to teach his students. Because talk about when you were in class and the um, the stick on the back of your legs. You no, oh, yes. So a in a martial art class, if it was actually a really, really, really good day that day, I didn't get hit with the bamboo stick. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, wow. If I could do everything perfect and I got no attention for doing anything wrong, that was a perfect day in class. Right. Right. And so don't you notice that with your kids too? Like, aren't there any times that you're thinking like, gosh, it seems like every time I talk to my kids, it's just this negative rub or, you know, so all of this stuff that I read to you, the, the four beliefs that were challenging, they sound good. You know, children should be lavished with attention and, and just loved and hugged because they're cute. Um, so I'm going to turn now to the solutions. All right. I know that you're sitting there, you're listening to this and you're going, wow, yeah, two wrongs don't make a right. Well, maybe I never thought about that before. Uh, so the resource here, we're on page 20 and chapter three of the Raising Healthy, Happy, Cooperative Kids book. So again, if you're just joining us or just seeing this part of the video, make sure to go to learnspeakkid.com so you can get a copy of this yourself and you can study it with us uh, every single week when we go live. Okay. Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. All right. So Myth number one is children should be lavished with attention. You know, that didn't come out till 1946 when Dr. Spock wrote a book called Baby and Child Care. 20 years before, in 1920, there was another um, author, and this is just when parenting started to become basically like an industry. But in 1920, parents were taught that if they kissed and coddled their babies in any way, that they were bad parents, that they would raise wussy kids. The children were to be on a strict schedule only. They ate at a certain time. They got out of bed at a certain time. And you did not respond to their kiss and coddles. Well, in 1946, Dr. Spock wrote a book called Baby and Shock Hair, where he writes in that book that, no, we've been doing everything wrong. And, you know, he stopped corporal punishment because corporal punishment was used before that time. So that's fine. He's like, you know, we're we're hurting our kids so what we're going to do instead is we're going to lavish them with attention blah, 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 kiss coddle and respond to their every whim and when they do something you don't like we're going to come in and we're going to put them on a timeout or what he called naughty time all right so this is why today in 2022 we believe that kids should be lavished with attention because for the last 85 years it's been ingrained into our souls into our minds into our hearts into our dna that your only job is to love your baby. Okay. If the only, if our only job is to love our kids, Tom, when does our job actually start or end? It never ends because it's like feeding that bottomless pit. I mean, if you're always saying yes, you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. And if you're the be all do all for everything that they ever desire, why would they ever leave the nest in our animal kingdom? They wouldn't. It's it, it's a good start. You do four at a very young age, but there's only a part that you have to shift and transfer it over. And that's one of the four we're going to talk about today. Uh, yes. And the male and female perspective might, might differ a little bit because I'm thinking as a mom and I'm thinking that if my only job was to love my babies, then, you know, the minute that they're born and they put the baby, your, your baby in your arms and you just lay there and you stare at how beautiful it is and you're just like, oh, I just love you so much. I want to eat you. Then it's like our job's done. So like Tom's like, it's never ending. It's never going to end. And I'm like, it's done the day that you're the bo your baby's born. So then what's your role? What's your job as a parent, right? <laughs> okay, so... Um, the solution for number one is that children require purpose over attention. Yes, purpose. They require a purpose. They want to feel like their lives mean something. And so here it says parents had more children to have more help on the farm because we're talking about what was the difference of parenting 100 years ago when our children were more respectful and they had work ethic. And, and they had some characteristics called self-control and self-discipline. So what changed? kids back then had purpose yes. thinking that our job is to lavish our kids with attention and love them takes their purpose away it steals any type of purposeful identity from them 
How much does that resonate with you to be true? The guests that we have here live. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, so then we need to give our children purpose by actually creating more opportunities for more responsibility. And we're not going to be able to get into everything today. Today, we're just going to challenge your beliefs. And if, if you're already having aha moments, if you're liking what we're talking about, give us a like, give us a comment below, share your story with us. We're here to help you to serve and to bring peace, harmony, and happiness to homes around the world. Because this whole teenage rebellion, terrible twos, uh, diagnoses of child behavior disorders, ADHD, oppositional defiant disorder. Guys, we're heading down the wrong path. We're here to kind of shock the world and go, no, no, you know, your kid doesn't need another hug. Your child needs purpose. All right. So number two was reactive attention. Now, what Thomas, we're going to talk about life skills. I just want to say this. When I met Thomas, my youngest was almost seven and I never even thought about teaching life skills. I thought it was my job to do be and have everything for him. And so the first time that Tom was actually around and my youngest son goes, mom, I'm thirsty. And I'm like, I'm a great mom. I'm going to, I'm going to come in and get him something to drink. I'm a, I'm a great mom. I'm showing off to Tom and Tom's like, Bonnie, I left something in the office. Can you go get whatever? And he sent me on this wild goose chase. And when I came back, well, you can finish telling the story, but I won't. But the point is, is reactive attention is our belief. Child does something. We come in, we give them some attention. We haven't really been taught, conditioned, or trained on how to give proactive attention. Correct. Okay. So you can finish the juice story and talk about proactive life skills training. Yes. So yeah, we, we sent Bonnie on a wild goose chase just to create a little one minute window where I could look at the eye of Zach and go, he's just asking, I want to do it myself. When do I get a turn? And all he knew was, mom, I want juice. Give me juice. <clears throat> I want juice. Right. It just, and then, and then it showed up. And then we had to break that cycle because he's past the age of two. We don't need to be doing for them anymore. Mm -hmm. So I asked him a series of questions. I go, have you ever made juice by yourself? No. I said, looks like you kind of want to, huh? Yeah. And then I, we just ran through the thing. I was like, well, where do we keep the orange juice? And he knew exactly where it was. He pointed right to the freezer. So opened it up, got out the, the juice. And I was like, huh? Well, this is a little tricky here. I wonder if there's a way to make this thing open. And I kind of just turned a little bit and, and he pointed right at the little white tab on the side. And I'm like, huh? So you just pull on that. And he goes, yeah. So I, he kind of held it. And I turned it and he kind of undid it. We were doing with together. And then I'm like, okay, now what? He goes, well, and then he knew what the juice jar was. He knew where that was in the cupboard. Amazing. And then he brought it out. We're like, okay, let's put it in there. And I'm like, so we're done. No, we got to do that. And he knew the next step. He put the water over there. And so what it is, is we got a chance to give him an opportunity to get his hands in the operation. And so we stirred it all up. He knew where that spoon was and he went around and around and put it right there. And then I knew it wasn't strong enough because it'll hold it up. So I was like, will you get that glass there and hold that one? We did it to get it ported in. And he sat right there and he, and when it was all done, Bonnie came back and then Zach had a big smile on his face, like the cat who ate the canary. And I, <laughs> and I asked Bonnie, I was like, so Bonnie, uh, who do you think uh, made the juice show up? Zach. And Bonnie was like, um, <laughs> like that, that's my job. Yeah. I never even thought to teach him to make juice. If you're with me on that, I do put a comment because I want to see where we're at. Like, have you taken the time to teach your six-year-old how to grab juice from the freezer and make his own juice? Like, I just never even thought about it. So I'm curious to see where you're at. So proactive life skills training. Yes. So the proactive part is to know that they're asking, when they're asking for something, we don't do it for them. We don't tell them no. They're actually looking for guidance on how they can make it happen and are asking you for the recipe, show me how you do it mm -hmm. and give it to me in, in, in a form that I can start to duplicate. You see, that's the power of life skills is duplicating the parents' efforts Bingo. from ourselves to the kids, just like we did on the farm. We had kids and yep. they started, well, you're two, you're following me, grab a bucket and let's go get some water. And they love it. And boy, transferring and duplicating your efforts you might have a chance to enjoy half your day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
my gosh, I guess I going to say this. Like, imagine if all the bunnies of the world had a teacher. <laughs> this is what happened to human beings. <clears throat> Dr. Bunny stands up and goes, you know what, guys? We should just stop teaching life skills. Your, your baby bunnies need to be lavished with attention. We should just hunt for them and do and be and have everything for them and drive them to their school and pick them up. Never let them walk to school. Let, never let them do anything on their own. Now, the baby bunnies, do they enjoy that? I mean, they just get to like sit in their little cave and, and eat their food, right? Like they don't have to do anything. And then the baby bunnies become adult bunnies. And now the mom bunny has like six adult bunnies hanging around in her cave who don't know how to hunt, who don't know how to think on their own. They don't know how to plan. They don't know how to take care of themselves because mom did it all for them. Now, what would happen to that generation of bunnies? And I don't think you can talk to me yet. We're going to talk, we're going to talk to you in just a minute. You can post a comment below what would happen to all the bunnies. Okay. So yes, a hundred years ago, parents had more kids, the baby boomers, because they needed more help on the farm. And that's the truth. Two-year-olds from two-year-olds all the way up, you know, they had roles to play. They had a role in the home. They had a purpose in life. 13-year-olds were out building their own houses, having babies and getting married. All right, just think about that for just a moment. All right, now we're moving on to number three, where Thomas kind of alluded to it a little bit in the teaching of life skills. When your child asks for something, mom, I want a bike. Mom, I want to go to my friend's house. I want dessert. I want whatever. When they're asking for something that's over and above basic food, clothes, and shelter, that's a privilege. Now, you might want a big screen TV, mom or dad. That's a privilege. What do you need to do to get a big screen TV if that's your desire? Now, your two-year-old might want ice cream or something like that, might, might want something that you think is really simple. But don't you still have to go to work, earn money, go to the store, buy the ice cream, bring it home, and, you know, there's, there's some things to do for you to be able to have ice cream. Your child wants to have ice cream, but it's a privilege that must or should be earned if we want to have our children learn characteristics that will strengthen their themselves, that will build confidence, that will have them becoming successful in life. So earning privileges. Yes. Earning privileges is that exact same thing. How many times do our kids ask for something? And that's what's key. You want them to ask because they're coming to you. And now there's the razor's edge. If they say, I want a cookie, I want a fishing pole, I want something, I want, I want. Mm -hmm. And all we do is say, well, if I say yes or no, not anymore. No more yes, no more no, right off the bat. Mm -hmm. You validate it and go, oh, you know what that's called? Us big kids call that a goal, a fishing pole. Would love for you to have a fishing pole. That's called a goal. Now, what did we do on the farm? Well, we worked that crop. We worked that crop, we worked that crop all the way through. And when we had a good harvest, then we could actually get that bounty and then go get the fishing pole because we earned it. We must mm -hmm. do something first. And that's where we're asking us. That's a goal. Great. Show me the steps that I can start taking action on to move in that direction. And that's what's very key. Earning the privilege because it's the neatest feeling in the world right inside and it comes out like a volcano <sighs> look what i did i did that it's the <laughs> best feeling in the world for them to build and grow on yes now when we say oatmeal is free but brown sugar is a privilege that should be earned you might look at us like <laughs> i said we were going to challenge some beliefs right now a belief is just a thought thought over again and again and again until it becomes a belief. So I want you to think about where did your beliefs come from and are they serving you now? Are your beliefs of lavishing your children with attention, authoritative, dictational type parenting, controlling their behavior, being, doing, having everything for them, giving them everything for free, that you buy them a bike, they lose it, you have to buy them a new bike? Like, where does it ever end? Is it your job to pay for their college education or do they have some type of responsibility in their own lives? 
oh, I'm so excited about this. I can't wait to like see the comments that are going to come in. Like maybe not. Anyways. Okay. So the last one is authoritative parenting. We've all watched super nanny. We, we may not even know who Dr. Spock is, but Dr. Spock is the grandfather and Adler too. I think uh, positive parenting solutions studied Adler and that's what she teaches. There's a lot of conscious parents out there that are regurgitating old teachers like Adler, like Drikers, like Super Nanny, like Dr. Spock, but they're all very teaching the same thing. Conscious parenting is like, yeah, okay, I'm hugging, I'm loving my kids. And then at the end of the day, their advice is, don't worry, mom, today might have been a hard day, but tomorrow's a new day. You can have a positive outlook. No, there are principles that when you learn them and you follow them, you can be very empowering because our kids don't want another hug. I promise you, it might sound crazy to you, but they're not sitting in their rooms going, I wish my mom would come and tell me how much she loves me and how much and give me a hug. They're saying, how can I be with my friends? How can I drink alcohol? How can I, you know, how can I be like you? How can I have Wi-Fi? How can I do all these things? They're not thinking anything else other than that. Um, so instead of, of dictating and all the things we talked about today, we want to teach you guiding behavior, which uh, it's so funny because I had 18 years in personal development. When I met Thomas, I had over 10,000 people in a business that I was building. I spoke all over the world. My story was always that we are born perfect and conditioned into mediocrity. And my children were all being diagnosed with these behavior disorders and mood disorders. They were depressed. They were anxious. There were all sorts of things going, going wrong with them. And I meet Tom and my child asked for something and he goes, Oh, that's called a goal. And I went oh, goal. Like they can set goals. And it's just started us on this whole new path. And we've done our due diligence for the last 10 years. We have researched, looked, read, tried to find any type of parenting philosophy or methodology that would match any success principles. Goal, set a goal, create a plan, persevere through obstacles, through the plan. That's our job is to encourage our kids to, to persevere through the plan until they achieve success. And really that's the only way to grow confidence, to help our children grow confidence, for you to grow your own confidence is to persevere through some obstacles towards a goal, something that you desire until you reach success. And that's really what makes makes life like exciting and fulfilling and happy. And so I wanna invite some guests on here. Do you have any thoughts before I invite Yes. And before I speak, if you're on YouTube and you want to join us live, you want to talk about this, you have any questions, the link to join us live right now, maybe for the next 10, 15 minutes or however long you want to talk for is at the very bottom of the description uh, tab. And if you are on Facebook, then um, look in the events and you'll find the live link to join us here and actually talk with us. That'd be cool. All right. So I'm going to invite uh christine and craig and i'm gonna invite dawn and look how this we can we can do this ah, cool. all right awesome well welcome thank you so much for being here do you have any thoughts comments observations or questions and you might need to unmute dawn it looks like you're unmuted yeah um <laughs> i just really appreciate everything that you guys teach and I was, I'm thinking about, uh, uh, like my oldest child. So I have a 20, well, just turned 26 year old and well, I started having kids when she was 10. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, anyway, I was the parent that just said no first and give my time myself time to research a matter before I would decide whether or not to change my mind with whatever stipulations involved. And then um, I, I, I got to the point where uh, he basically just stopped talking to me. Um, he, he, he did the boomerang thing. He moved out at about, um, 18 and then moved back in at about 19. And then for the next five years, he lived in my house with headphones in, not looking at me. And, and it wasn't until I, I can't, 
I haven't said it for a little while, but it wasn't until I was really um, getting involved with your program that I started learning how to do things differently. And then uh, he got engaged to be married and was going to move out. And I was just desperate thinking I lost all this time, we've been in the same house for five years, not talking to each other. And now you're moving away. And and uh, and basically, um, he said one of those things uh, where, where, like Tom was saying, you, you taught him how to lie, cheat, and steal. And he said, you taught me it's okay to lie. It's, it works to lie. That's the only way you can, <laughs> you can get the things that you need. And... Uh, so now I've got, finally, we were able to talk and we were able to um, heal a little bit um, wow. before before he married and moved all the way across the country. And uh, now I've got three little ones that I'm, I'm working to try and do this differently with them. And I'm grateful for you guys for wow. teaching me that there could be a different way. Thank you so much for sharing. And, you know, I want to say we do have some grandmas, um, some older moms. I know we have one mom in particular who said, I found out, I reached out to you guys about two and a half years ago. I wasn't in a position to follow through to work with you. And now my son's now older. He's now 20 and, and he's dealing with a lot of stuff that um, she had just been taken down a path that was very disheartening and has now come back to creating champions for life. And this is the thing I know we're different. We're going to, like I said at the beginning, we're challenging beliefs. This is four beliefs that are going to change your life forever. If you join us late, you might want to watch the entire replay because we can't, we can't redo the whole thing. Um, and, but this was really powerful today. And Dawn, what you just shared there is super powerful. You know, we have the power. If you're a mom watching this, you have all the power to transform things in your home, to bond the relationship with your children, to be on the same side as your children. See, when my son says, I want a bird, I'm like, that is awesome. What kind of bird? Well, I'm not sure. Well, let's go do some research. Pick out your top five favorite birds. What do they eat? How much attention do they need? You know, all these questions. And so I've got pictures of us at the libraries doing all his own research, you know, and that's, that to me is school. He's, he's researching, he's reading, he's learning, and he's making a decision all on his own. I do not feel responsible to buy him a bird, a bird cage, to teach him anything about birds other than to be his support, to teach him how to find the answers about birds. So, I mean, but you have the rest of your life, sweetie. I was 46 before I called my mom and I said, mom, I just realized that you are the perfect mom for me. I was 46 years old. <laughs> It might take a while, right? We're not going to get awards and pins and gratitude from our kids because even though I look at my kids and they love me, I'm their, I'm, I can tell I'm their most favorite trusted advisor in the world. They have no idea it was creating champions for life that made them as powerful as they are. They just think they were born that way, right? <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for sharing. Christine and Craig, do you have anything to share or add or ask? Um, sure, yeah. So, um, just thinking about what we were talking about with the coddling and doing everything for them, feeling like if you just give them enough love and do everything for them and just, you know, that's making them happy. Um, and then what we discovered, because our children are now 12 and 13, over the last few years, um, started getting defiant, started getting um, depressed, and especially the last couple of years and not, you know, kind of, you know, like we, um, instead of teaching them and transferring over the skills and doing everything for them, we just kind of, oh, just go over there and go play or go do whatever. We'll take care of it. And now we have seen the past couple of years, what that's done is it has made them depressed and made them feel like, oh, we're just supposed to sit over here and kind of do nothing. What are we, you know, even doing? And um, mm -hmm. so, yeah, engaging. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, there were things that we obviously, you know, the basic things that we know that we had to teach them, but not fully engaging them in everything about life and the life skills that, they need and how to make things for them show up without what we learned with you guys is 
you know, not saying yes or no, um, helping them make it show up all on their own and giving them that motivation and power and excitement back. Um, cause, and another thing is what we <laughs> discovered too, is, you know, when they start getting depressed in those things that we caused by the way that we were doing things, um, no amount of hugs in the world or anything is going to help them get out of that. Um, so that's, that was another big aha moment, um, that we discovered that that's something that, um, they need to, you know, be taught how to overcome those feelings on, you know, us teaching them the skills to overcome that. And with the passion and purpose and confidence that they build through, um, learning and engaging and making things show up on their own and being happy about their successes and that I did it kind of feeling is what um, we're seeing that that's what it's all about. Yeah. That's really it, isn't it? It really is. I mean, if you could that's just, it in a nutshell, it's beautiful. Thank right? you. I did it. Say no. And yeah. Where you see something we don't like, and we we go into automatic can't don't want mode, right? And that's our old belief, right? So we were being a yeah. good parent, but then when we switched around, going, "Oh my gosh, they've got a goal," and I identify it, and they came to me as a trusted advisor to show them how, when, and where they could do it. Yes, I'll do it first, but then there you go, little champ. How cool is that? And now that you can do that. What else do you think that you might want to go do? And then all of a sudden they come alive. And what's the opposite of depression? You pump life into them and then it becomes something they go. The whole world is like a big playground. I can do anything if I followed that formula. (laughs) Got a goal. Let me get that plan from my trusted advisor. And as I take action, Mm -hmm. I know I'm not going to get it correct the first time right but you're there to help me turn those obstacles and opportunities. And these obstacles are no longer problems. They're puzzles and every puzzle has a solution. And when I can figure that out and you get that cycle going goal plan, take action, perseverance (laughs) before you know it, they're not only ready to leave out of the nest, but you're their trusted advisor for life, Mm. which means you trust and connection is so solid. So, So you'll never have to ever have that feeling of I'm going to lose my kids and I'm going to have an empty nest syndrome because it's not about you. No one, our role is to empower them and duplicate what we can do through them. That's powerful. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm glad you see it. I'm glad you're doing it. And you're right. The hugs come tenfold for the rest of your life. Right, Bonnie? Oh my God. Okay. So my kids are, they're 17, 21, 22. And then my son is uh, 23. He'll be 24 here soon. Uh, But the younger one, the younger three, right? The 17 year old, the 21 or 22 year old, just this Christmas, I was sitting on a chair and they were all sitting on my knee. Like I, do you remember that? I, I got Jake. I'm like, Jacob, take a picture. I had Zach, Jenny and Kira just for all trying to sit on my knee. And there's just like these great big, huge, they think they're puppies, but they're dogs, you know, they're huge. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, this is so cute. You need to get a picture of this. And I forgot we do have a picture of that, but yeah, it just gets better and better and better and stronger. And I never, my kids never, phone me and ask me for money. In fact, when uh, when COVID came and my oldest daughter, or yeah, Kira, she's a waitress, and uh, she wasn't able to work for a little while. And I remember her phoning me going, oh my gosh, and she was crying. She's like, I don't know what to do. I can't go to work. And um, you know, I need to pay rent. And, then, and it was the beginning of the month. And I'm like, okay, well, did you just pay rent for the month? She goes, yeah. And, uh, and I'm like, okay, so you have a roof over your head for the next 30 days? She goes, yeah. I go, do you have clothes to wear and food in the fridge? She goes, well, yeah. And I'm like, well, what we're worrying about is 30 days away. What I would do right now is just be like, I'm so grateful. And I go, and if you if you need me to, I can ship you a few hundred dollars. And she goes, no, 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 I, I don't need that. I wasn't calling for that. I was just wanting to vent and have some advice. And um, we had a talk. She felt better. And then anything, anyways, it all worked out. My point is, is that, it doesn't end when they're 18, like Don was saying. They will always come back. And you must have done something right. He's he's grown up. He's getting married. He's moving. That's called initiative. That's called independence. 
and they're supposed to break free from us, right, moms? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> they're eventually they're supposed to break free from us. They're not supposed to need us for every single little thing in their life. At 16, they don't need us to buy them a car. They need us to show them how to go get a job, how to earn money, what it looks like, how to buy a car. Oh, you know, the different places you can find a car, how to negotiate. They need the life skills and they need you because you're the only person in the world that's going to love them enough to be tough enough with them to go. My role is to prepare you for life. And, you know, just, we just watched a movie last night. I actually saved the movie. It was um, uh, something hillbilly. It was from 2020 and it was just a whole story. Anyway, grandma ends up with the kid and the kid's going through teenage rebellion and he's uh, starting to do drugs and stuff like that. And so grandma takes the kid and um, at some point the kid goes, I hate you. And she goes, so I'm not in this for a popularity contest. You don't need to like me, but I'm going to tell you, if you, you know, keep on this path, you know, you're going to be down a wrong path. You need to have school. You need to have work ethic. You need to have certain things so you can actually survive in this world. And I'm like, I got the chills. I got, I got hair on my arms standing up because this whole idea that we've been taught to lavish our kids with attention and they just need love and hugs is totally off the mark. It's sending us off the edge of a cliff. It's killing our children. ADHD, ODD, autism, Asperger's, child teenage suicide, the number one cause of death, uh, school gun shootings, hundreds of them every year happening right now. Two decades ago, less than 10. Now, hundreds of them every year. We don't even hear about the school gun shootings. Our kids are sending us a message. They need us to step up. They need us to choose to be their leader, not their martyr, not their love, not their attention provider, not their happy meter. They need us to be their leaders because we are really, truly the only ones that care about them enough to actually do it. So, yeah, we're going to wrap it up. Any closing comments from anybody? No, we're good. Just want to say thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being here. No? All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining. We'll go live at 8 a.m. every Saturday morning, Mountain Standard Time. We'll post it and everything else. LearnToSpeakKid.com is where you get the resources, the invitation to our study group. And uh, with that all being said, until we meet again, here's Cheers. 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 Bye for now. Cheers. Bye.